Namaste, Namaskar, Anakam to P Guru's audience. It's very interesting and I always love to address the P Guru's audience because of the nature of the comments. I thank Sri Iyer for providing this opportunity. Today we will uh, take up an important topic about uh, COVID uh, spread in China or what you may loosely call re-spread in China in terms of its uh, you know different variant and uh, supposed to have infected significant number of uh, location in china also seem to have given up on the uh, you know zero tolerance or zero covid situation and uh, many uh, towns and cities are having the problem lockdowns and all the reports are coming slowly about uh, the type of crowding of the hospitals and uh, some people even suggest that chinese vaccines are not uh, uh, very useful and uh, Anyhow, now the question is, we will pose the question, should India offer help to China? First point. Before that, I would like to mention, I am very saddened to say that in the social media, number of people are gloating over the problems of China. This is not a very uh, advantageous or a appropriate thing gloating over a neighbor's problem, kindly remember, karma is a cycle. So, and, uh, when the neighbor is in difficulty or there is a death in his family or there is gloating over it is not a, you know, I am recollecting the observation of Winston Churchill when he was told in the 40s that uh, India is facing a severe famine and millions are dying. It's not, uh, at that time, you know, they diverted the shipload of uh, grains to Europe for future protection and other thing. Then he was told uh, that millions are dying. He seemed to have commented that the old man, old fakir man uh, Gandhi as he died or not. That is the type of a cruelty and uh, type of uh, attitude the British uh, chief uh, Winston Churchill had towards India. Anyhow, so the gloating about uh, neighbors uh, is not a very good thing. Second thing is, we have already upset uh, US, all the three major lobbies of US, pharma lobby, defense lobby, as well as the oil lobby. Oil lobby because of uh, our acquisition of oil from the Russia and also to top it all in rupee term. So they are extraordinarily upset. In spite of the fact that uh, Europe is getting good amount of their uh, gas uh, still from uh, Russia. But somehow they feel that uh, India should uh, behave as per their thinking or as per their instruction. And other. Pharma lobby because we refuse to import in spite of so much amount of advice and pressure. And uh, we used our own domestic uh, created the science and uh, it has been a reasonably a successful thing and we have also acted well in advance and our people have been extraordinarily cooperative you know standing in long queues to go back to their home uh, villages from urban uh, centers like bombay uh, chennai uh, bangalore etc one of my colleague in france told in paris uh, we would have burnt a couple of these buses if this has happened and your people are so cooperative and so uh, kind maybe you know one reason could be our belief in karma or our love for god or that's not very uh, critical but the fact of the matter is we have dealt with our uh, covid situation in a very uh, what i would rather call successful way and uh, using only local designs we didn't accept the American medicines and other thing at that point of time. That is the anger of the pharma lobby. The defense lobby in US is always not uh, very congenial to India because we have not been so much dependent on US uh, uh, arms and armaments. Actually, if you remember this uh, cryogenic engine, which is not uh, directly related to any of the uh, arms issue, but that was denied to us. And uh, some of you may recall, uh, Joe Biden was one of the major sponsor of the Senate resolution in denying that. Let me tell you very bluntly, Biden is uh, 
significantly anti india is not carried and even though he is uh, moving here and there he is having this uh, temporary memory loss problem and uh, actual show is run by even today hillary clinton and obama both of them are not uh, and favorably disposed towards uh, india with uh, through the defense uh, lobby actually three sets of uh, people uh, noland and uh, uh, the other two powerful women they are uh, active in terms of destabilizing regime uh, they love love to call it as regime change the regimes which they are not very happy about they would like to change it but uh, our current uh, prime minister is uh, not somebody who is very uh, easy amenable for all these type of uh, uh, things of course they don't like him not uh, only because he is uh, sort of a hindu nationalist more important is he is uh, not easy to uh, be corrupted so there is a and they would love to use india as a countermeasure for china just like they thought a small country like ukraine can be used for against russia so oh, that is there so the year 23 is going to be extraordinarily difficult for india let me repeat it significant amount of violence significant amount of uh, anti government uh, activities will be picking up with uh, the uh, regime change attitude so we were uh, mentioning about uh, the us being upset and three people i was mentioning susan rice samantha power and victoria nolant are the three people and uh, one should be very very clear they the nolant is the one who is a uh, activist is uh, in closely in relationship with ngos and a substantial amount of uh, uh, you know what you may call regime change activities are undertaken by her and uh, samantha power is one of them behind uh, you know the uh, ukraine 2013 uh, massive agitations and demonstrations in ukraine what is that called uh, the euro model changes and uh, she has been very instrumental in that the point i want to stress is as we go along in 23 significant amount of anti china rhetoric will be increased in india it's a very interesting thing actually because we don't uh, so much uh, believe the news uh, in new york times or washington post about india because much of it is cooked up and uh, much of it is not uh, reliable but we take it as gospel when it comes to some uh, you know uh, information about uh, china in the same media because our knowledge of china primarily comes from these uh, uh, media of uh, us only i am sure less than 100 people may be knowing the uh, chinese uh, language and our knowledge of the fault lines within china is relatively nothing so many number of chinese experts are uh, part of the our uh, uh, what social media watching closely what is happening in india and uh, i don't think in vibo of uh, their uh, twitter many of the indian uh, people are watching it or anything so we get information or we are fed information by uh, china that is the most important thing by the us and we take it as a, you know hook line and sinker and so there is a huge anti china lobby is being built up which will be very very interesting for us because it can use uh, india shoulder to shoot at china that's a thing and we should be very very careful about it we should uh, not fall into the trap of the western countries because for them china is a very major threat is the new cold war if it develops it will be between the west and the china and the west is a declining power i think we have been telling about it for too long so there is no need for us to be uh, antagonistic to china we need not necessarily be tally with them but uh, we can maintain a very appropriate relationship now the covid crisis in china gives an opportunity as an elder brother kindly remember between india and china india is the elder brother 
because in terms of culture, in terms of civilizational linkages, we have been uh, uh, the greatest facilitators for them. They also agree. If you go to China and uh, meet some of the elderly people, I've been there several times. They consider India to be their uh, elder brother. So we should offer help in terms of uh, the COVID. We have to be very uh, cautious. Some will say that uh, China may not uh, agree with it. Quite possible because even in the worst famine situations and other things, China never went with the begging bowl to the globe. They wanted to manage their own way and uh, it might not have been the best way, but their uh, nation, which is uh, self-pride, is phenomenally high from the time of Chun Lai and uh, Mao Zedong and others. Anyhow, they don't agree, that's fine. But we would have earned an enormous amount of goodwill of the ordinary Chinese that we did offer the help. And uh, again, you know, some people will say ordinary Chinese will never come to know another thing. They are all living in their fool's paradise. Today, the information and the type of uh, exchanges are so long and uh, we can have some uh, of uh, our own people joining Vibo and then spreading the message. That's not a very uh, difficult thing at all. And there is a huge amount of goodwill in China. For instance, during the worst uh, phase two of uh, COVID, uh, PLA magazine published an article in which they had side by side uh, uh, photo of uh, you know flowers and other thing in China and the bodies getting burnt in uh, guards in Varanasi and other thing and uh, you should uh, uh, realize there was a significant amount of criticism by the social media people for uh, dragging uh, India in this fashion they told why published like this and it was withdrawn by the PLA actually based on the pressure which was built so there is a good amount of uh, what you may loosely call goodwill is uh, prevalent which uh, we should be able to exploit unfortunately china has got something like 15 to 16 centers for studying india we don't have any we have one uh, uh, in jnu and uh, one is uh, coming up in uh, rashtriya uh, raksha university but otherwise we don't have significant number of uh, uh, Chinese study center. We should uh, understand China from our own eyes, not through the Western lens. We have not, uh, we should create some 50 centers at least. Second point, in case China agrees to our offer of uh, providing medicine, create a huge amount of change in terms of the perception, an ordinary Chinese will be enormously appreciative about our offer. Now, whether they are going to agree or not is a matter of uh, debate. But we should offer, according to me, we must offer the help to our younger brother. And uh, and offering help is, uh, some people say, unless they ask for, you know, nobody is going to uh, ask for another thing. We offer the help and if it is taken, fine. If it is not taken, also fine. Actually, in the very olden time, Mahabharata time, the... Help is given and the giver never reveals that he has given the help. That's something very, very interesting type of a past we had. Anyhow, that's a separate uh, type of a yuga and separate type of a story. So we must uh, go forward and offer our help in order to. And let me be very clear, the 21st century, the century of Asia, which means uh, India and China. And uh, let's not uh, uh, try to, uh, what one can call, fall into the Western trap that India alone can deal with China and India alone can. And some this war mongering and other thing is highly uh, ineffective, highly not uh, desirable at all, actually, in terms of, you know, we will fight to the finish and fight to finish for what? Finish whom? So, this is not a very good type of a thing. And... Uh, let me repeat it again and again. US and other Western countries will go on egging us to fight China. That's not going to be beneficial to us or to the uh, China. It's going to be only beneficial for Western power. 
He should not become a pawn in the hands of the Western powers. Whatever is feasible, whatever is possible, we should have amicable type of a relationship. Of course, the border issue is there. We should try to talk it over. Not a very impossible thing in order to sort out the differences and other things. Immediate requirement. I will tell the PM, uh, the health minister, finance minister and uh, home minister, defense minister and others is to offer China our own medicines and various other possible uh, accessories and other things in order to overcome their crisis. We should tell them that, uh, you know, we are there to help you and uh, that would electrify the atmosphere and change the entire complexion of our relationship. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.